Hello everyone. Uh, welcome back to Learn Economia. Uh, today I am here with you with a new video, uh, a new lesson in economics. Uh, here we will be discussing individualistic theories and within that we will focus on financial dualism. Before starting the video I would like to thank you for watching this video and I would also like to remind you to subscribe this channel for more videos and also I would like to remind you to like this video. Um, with that I start today's lesson. If you look at uh, dualistic theories in the arena of economics, uh, what we could understand is that there are three sets of dualistic theories in economics, which basically focus on uh, three main and different or three different aspects. So before going to uh, see what are the, the what are these three important aspects, it's basically very much important to understand what is the essence of dualistic theories. If you look at poor uh, economies, poor underdeveloped economies in the world, we could see that poverty and underdevelopment is something that uh, these poor economies experience. And as per many economists, this poverty or underdevelopment faced by poor countries could be attributed to their dualistic character. And as a result, we have three sets of theories which basically look into three different arenas of uh, uh, dualism. The first is social dualism, the secondly we have technological dualism and uh, thirdly we have financial dualism. And if you look at specifically into financial dualism which is the subject matter of this uh, video, uh, um, we could see that it was Professor Mint who has developed the theory of financial dualism. And as per Professor Mint, uh, this is something uh, fin or financial dualism is something that arises because of the division of money markets into two uh, or the division of money markets into organized money market and unorganized money market in the least developed countries. And if you compare the rate of interest between the least uh, between the organized money market and unorganized money market, you could see that the rate of interest in the unorganized money market is something that is very much higher than the rate of interest in the organized money market. Uh, organized money market and it's uh, it is also important to know that organized money market is something that basically concentrate uh, uh, with on the modern sector, and uh, unorganized money market is something that is related to the uh, traditional sector or, or agriculture sector and uh, the unorganized money market uh, it is something that consists of village money lenders then they have they are not in a position to get advanced money also if you look at the colonial system the colonial under colonial system organized money market of least developed countries consisted of branches of western commercial banks which were linked to the international financial market and in the colonial system modern sector consisted of both mines plantation foreign trade borrowed a low rate of interest from western banks and the world capital markets but it at present the least developed countries have attained monetary independence by establishing their own central banks and they have introduced exchange control as well as a result the organized money market of the least developed countries have been separated from the world capital market hence their central banks are following cheap monetary policies even when they are having a problem with respect to shortage of funds they are maintaining overvalued exchange rate on the ground the devaluation will create inflation in the economy on the other hand there is chronic excess demand for foreign exchange in these poor countries to meet the situation these countries depend on exchange controls dealer controls monetary policy and fiscal policy this has led to enhance this has led to enhance the problem of economic dualism between the traditional sector and the modern India sector. <laughs> the cheap monetary policy by maintaining artificial low rate of interest has become helpful for the large industrial sector and the low interest rate have discouraged flow of funds from abroad and savings from within the country. But this has created excess demand for loans. There is a major part of domestic savings are flowing towards the industrial sector and this has reduced the capital to traditional agriculture sector which have which have uh, uh, which is something that have a high interest rate and the foreign exchange control to correct the deficit in balance of payment has also benefited the modern industrial sector compared to uh, the case in the agriculture or traditional sector 
it is because a major share of available foreign exchange is allocated to industrial sector to import capital intensive goods on the other hand the agriculture sector or the small scale sector fail to get the foreign exchange and import permits because of many problems like red tapism corruption etc faced in the faced by the least developed countries and the most of the underdeveloped countries have established agriculture banks and cooperative society though this is the case these institution in many cases have found providing loans to many influential people and to modern villagers uh, or model villagers and these banks or commercial co- or cooperative societies mo- most often they try to neglect common uh, farmers or uh, small agricultural farmers all this has led to misallocation of resources between the modern sector and the traditional agriculture sector so money markers in ldcs have become very much backward domestic inflation along with the overvalued exchange rate have en- encouraged flight of capital in the countries where there is this is checked the capital moved in the purchase of gold jewelry real estate and other speculative activities and this is because of the low rate of interest against investment Hence, the money market remains very much ineffective. We know that government controls over the scarce capital supply uh, have also retarded the growth of financial intermediaries in least developed countries. And these controls favor the large manufacturer units and banks, and they discriminate against small borrowers and money lenders who provide credit to small borrowers who are basically in the agriculture sector. and in the ldcs government believe that capital funds invested in durable capital goods are productive and something that is invested in financing the agriculture sector uh, are something that are very much unproductive and if you look at uh, uh, the cheap and easy credit to traditional sector we could see that Uh, the cheap and easy credit is not given to traditional sector and professor min has identified sector and reasons for this uh, as per him the high overhead uh, high overhead cost and salaries of efficient commercial bank in the rural areas can be one of the uh, reasons and red tapers in dealing with small borrowers according to rigid rules can be another reason lack of coordination between head office and branches can be another reason and lack of subsidies loans supplied by agriculture banks can be another reason and he has suggested persimmon has suggested some ways or some policies to reduce the financial devaluation in least developed countries and as per him this can be achieved either by uh, official interest rate in the organized sector uh, Uh, if either by increasing the official interest rate in the organized capital market, or, or, or by and uh, or by uh, f- making free access on equal terms to capital funds by the modern sector and traditional sector, and if you are uh, raising the interest rate in the organized capital market, this will attract savings from both from the country and out of the country, and it will also create an equilibrium between the demand for loanable funds and supply of loanable funds. If you are going to make um, both the modern sector and traditional sector uh, act. Uh, able to access this um, uh, access this credit and this will reduce the misallocation of resources between the two sectors and the two sectors agriculture sector and the modern sector will be able to access uh, credit uh, on equal terms and thereby reduce the financial devaluation in ldcs with that i would like to end this video thank you for watching this video i request you to like share and subscribe this channel for more videos thank you